action. There was an idea called the Avengers Initiative. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people. See if they could become something more. See if they could work together when we needed them to. To fight the battles that we never could. Kevin Feige has fought so many battles to produce 19 movies for Marvel. At this point, he's one of my producer heroes. One of my dreams is to become Kevin Feige for DC. Right now, I'm unqualified, but I'm going to change that. One day, my destiny will arrive. One day, I'm going to meet Joss Whedon, and I will shake his hand. The story initiates the Avengers. Loki's arrival on Earth prompts Nick Fury to gather Hawkeye, Black Widow, Hulk, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. They don't all get along at first, but Loki's plan motivates a shift in attitude. So, Banner. New York becomes their battlefield. The Avengers battle an alien race and their leader, Thor's adopted brother. Groundbreaking. That is what you want. To be told a story that inspires you. You ache for passionate storytelling because it's personal. Make no mistake, he loves you for caring, but we have our job and he has his. Buffy and Firefly showed off an ability to write characters that inspired fascination. These characters have been a source of fascination for decades. The cast reinforces that fascination. Our casting director deserves an award. It's this quality of casting. This guy loves the pressure. Mark Ruffalo dealt with two kinds of pressure. Give you and me the Hulk we deserve. Give the Avengers the Hulk they deserve. No cause for concern, Mark Ruffalo is a gifted actor. Joss Whedon is a gifted writer. The dialogue may not sound like them, but it's not meant to. Joss Whedon was hired because he's Joss Whedon. To ensure a popcorn-selling beast, he relied on tropes and originality. The main theme is both. Our composer's career has been tremendous. The first Avenger was his first superhero movie. I first fell in love with score thanks to this man and his Batman score. He practices my favorite philosophy on film score. Now, I have no clue how to read music. I can't play a single instrument. However, I know an effective score. This is one of them. The Avengers is one effective superhero movie. How can that be? Confident execution motivated by an obsession with the material. The more you respect it, the harder you work. My respect for this genre goes to infinity and beyond. Patience. Loki is first in line for defeat. Loki is a fan favorite. We thank Tom Hiddleston. He brings the heat. In the words of the man himself, Loki is a deeply mixed up cat. As he should be, you must be this crazy to qualify. We know from the start he's not going to win, and that's all right. The plot is not why we are watching. We want every glorious minute of our favorite heroes fighting side by side. Seamus McGarvey got to work after finishing a smaller movie. The scale is bigger, but emotion is not lost. He relied on these to capture the mayhem. Yes, even on an iPhone. I don't know what shots, but it's true. I can't imagine they were effects shots. Or maybe they were. These two are very good at what they do. They would make an iPhone visual effects shot look the best. Thanks to our costume designer, our Avengers look their best. Taking an actor seriously is one thing. Their costume is another. Think about X-Men. Their costumes help sell their world. You don't laugh, you invest. That's earned by a job well done. Same for our production designer. 
making a space where fantasy and reality meet, and it feels like home. He's no stranger to that accomplishment. This movie is no exception. It's exciting. Yours truly put together an exciting journey. Everyone is introduced. They are brought together. They are forced apart. They stand together. They triumph as one. Joss Whedon's triumph lies in the character interactions. Chuck, what makes for great character interaction? Great character interaction does not seem forced. They progress the entire story along. You can have all the scenic and explosions and all that kind of loud action scenes, but if every time they talk to each other you just go kind of cringe because uh, just the writing's bad or the acting's just weird, it completely fails the movie. Well, good news. That never happens. That happens when the writer has experience. Is The Avengers a typical superhero experience? Absolutely yes and absolutely no. Every superhero has the same mission. Protect their domain. Gotham, Metropolis, Themyscira, Wakanda, New York City. The hero protects everyone that lives there from all evil. The Avengers must protect New York from an alien invasion. Yes, we've watched plenty of alien invasions. However, watching the Avengers take one on in 2012 was a fresh phenomena. We had imagined it. Now we saw it. This long tracking shot was a dream come true. I love movies that integrate them. It's a personal fascination of mine. How much story can you tell without drawing attention to the shot? I'm a sucker for these, and yeah, it's my favorite thing. This was made almost entirely in a computer. Still impressed me. Seamless integration. My favorite scene may surprise you. Maybe. Their chemistry is off the charts. Nothing is forced. Nothing is off. They're completely in sync. I'm not a wedding guy, but I'll attend theirs. Three notes for possible improvement. In a fall 2012 interview, Wally Pfister gave the Avengers a bad review. He's one of my heroes, so I read the quote. They'd shoot from some odd angle and I'd think, why is the camera there? Oh, I see. Because they spent half a million on the set and they have to show it off. I watched the movie again with that in mind. And in parts, I saw what he saw. All brothers fight. But Loki and Thor are special. They fought once before and it was awesome and intense. This is the opposite of that. I know, casting real aliens is not yet possible, but it's obvious they're CGI. What may not be obvious is my admiration for this movie. Well, now it is. Truly atypical. The story follows the Avengers. After the Scepter is recovered from Hydra, Tony initiates Project Ultron, a program designed to protect the world. The result goes mental. Ultron comes to life as a hostile robot. After the Avengers put him down, he sets up shop in Sokovia. With a new frame, he befriends the Maximoff twins and develops a plan to kill the Avengers. They track him down and do battle. Later, the Maximoff twins learn of Ultron's true intentions and join the Avengers. Ultron's plan backfires, and Vision is born. Three stronger, the Avengers go up against Ultron. And this time, to the death. Broken. Ultron left our director broken. A storyteller with a vision who lacked proper support, which I find odd. The brick wall had been broken through. We gave our approval and placed Joss Whedon on a very tall pedestal. Then the quicksand made itself known. How do you top it? As the sole writer, Joss Whedon's life was hell. Eleven superheroes and a robot baddie. For two hours and 21 minutes, it's a lot. The most ambitious superhero project. But he was game. 
He wanted to make a new movie, a movie that could benefit from the progress CGI had made. A shot like this was now possible, but that's not all. The group is more worn in, I would think so after 100 days of filming. About the same for Joss Whedon's reference for inspiration. Mm-hmm. Yep. Soldiers in battle. Chaos in all directions. A beautiful, gritty action film. With Ben Davis as director of photography, the production shot with three types of digital cameras. Jeffrey Ford and Lisa Lasek cut it all together. Over 3,000 shots. More than the first movie. We have more characters, too. Joss Whedon wanted Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver for two reasons. Give Ultron someone to talk to. See this world through new eyes. Our Avengers have their eyes on Ultron. James Spader was Joss Whedon's muse. How good is James Spader? I watch Ultron and I want to be an actor. It's not just him either. I watch Paul Bettany. I watch these two. Very inspiring. But they have a tough job. The animators do too. I took one class for that and the language went over my head. I appreciate it though. Well-rendered CGI that blends in is awesome. An amazing sound mix complements all of it. When I consider how complex that process is, and a phenomena like a tie at the Oscars, my first thought is how does the Avengers not tie for that? Well, to be fair, all of these tie in. That is no easy win. Winning against Ultron takes a lot of heart, and that's the point. The heart of Ultron lies in the idea of together. Individually, our heroes have measured screen time. Charles Wood faced a big challenge. Create a space for all of them to coexist equally. Within every space, the story question travels with our characters. What would happen if God sought to wipe out the Avengers? For a blockbuster with an obligation, not the easiest pitch to green light. Although, I hear once you've reached God status, I hear it gets a little easier. Having placed the Dark Knight on a pedestal, I can totally appreciate a blockbuster that's more than just an escape. But, the escape elements are in place. Lots of action, lots of explosions, powers on display, a lot of CGI, punching, getting knocked out, good versus evil, three hot girls, two tracking shots that I admire very much. Yeah, I'm a cinematography nerd. I'm also an emotional nerd. My favorite shot. Hawkeye's wife watches the Avengers off to work. These two work so well together. My favorite interpretation. When our beast goes on rampage mode, Iron Man suits up. They engage in combat and destroy a lot of property. One of the buildings that gets demolished got me thinking. Imagine Iron Man fighting Hulk in San Francisco, destroying this building. Hulk's rampage creates a public fear. Morale takes a hit. The meaning of their symbol does too. The twins help the Avengers reverse back. Ever watch Godzilla? They were married. Now, brother and sister. I know, I know. But to their credit, they kick ass. These interactions do the same. So yes, Joss Whedon made a new movie. But even gods in Hollywood can make mistakes. Three notes for possible improvement. Ultron is interesting, but where is his development? A program with a voice embodies an android. Then a few more. Next thing you know, he's full-blown Ultron. The questions pile up, and Joss Whedon and his boss ignore all of them. Shit! Language! In my original review, I spoke of it not being strong enough. Time to rephrase. If language had carried over, yes to that. Every line is important. So is every character. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are underwritten. Their backstory is glazed over. Their personal vendetta against Tony Stark is forgotten after one scene. Plus, 
They have no bonding time. Texture is not to be undervalued, nor should this movie be. And I'm sure, just like Joss Whedon, Joe and Anthony Rousseau were aware of the value of the Avengers. I myself know people who do and do not. In preparation, I rewatched every film in order, and yes, I own them all on Blu-ray. My kids have seen all of these films. My granddaughter wants to be the next Black Widow. They're still making these movies. The Marvel Megaverse is fine for little kids, but what I am really interested in is Deadpool. The cast and crew have my respect for life. The story brings together the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Their mission is a big one. Stop Thanos from collecting all six Infinity Stones. Half of the world will be killed if he succeeds. New allies and old friends combine their powers to fight Thanos. Their team spirit is strong, but Thanos isn't Loki or Ultron. He's indestructible. Heartbroken. You are going to leave this movie heartbroken. But don't worry, you will grow and mature from it. For 10 years, I've never once thought twice about watching the next Marvel movie. This genre makes me tick. It's my trigger. When it lets me down, yeah, it hurts. But when it works, it feels really good. Joe and Anthony Rousseau are the first directors to tackle three Marvel movies. Came close. James Gunn will be the second. The Winter Soldier was their Marvel debut. That level of quality should have been applied sooner. The Winter Soldier possessed a consistent emotional weight. Civil War did as well. It was a complex story that broke up the Avengers. The writers pulled off a miracle by not forcing that arc. Now a new challenge lay ahead. Write storylines that motivate new character interactions and make it work better than anyone could imagine. The opening scene sets the stage for an opera. We meet Thanos and realize just how screwed our heroes are. Genocide, that's the plan. It's a formula, which is a common complaint. We know Iron Man 3 will happen. So, why tease Iron Man will die in space? That is a fantastic question. The point is building a team dynamic. That's a relatable, real-life thing. So is breaking up. Sometimes it's for the better. Personalities and philosophies are at combat. Things get ugly. Both parties are more productive on their own. A new team helps too. Everyone fights hard, and their desperation brings out a new side to their person. Watching heroes win is uplifting. Watching them cope with a sad reality is difficult. Major characters die, or come close, and it was emotional. I think back to Batman saving Harvey Dent. A better class of criminal can stop the hero from having it both ways. Our directors got it both ways. A story with emotion and laughs. That's never easy. Thankfully, we have two amazing writers. They have made a very special list. Their career began with yours truly. They grew from there. They have a real knack for fantasy. They should write the next Peter Pan film. When you have Peter Pan syndrome, you watch this like it's real life. And I'm very okay with that because the real world kinda sucks. The approach the filmmakers took for this movie is kinda awesome. Marry the structure of Nashville with the scope of Game of Thrones. These two inspired our directors. Their past visual inspirations were just as awesome. Those films have a distinct visual style, courtesy of inspiring image makers. Our image maker made history. A big story demands a big frame. Effective is an understatement. The first movie, shot entirely in IMAX. It's about time. Two hours and 36 minutes. The longest Marvel movie to date. 
The Hulk has the shortest screen time, but we get to enjoy Bruce Banner in a very big way. I'm in love with Mark Ruffalo. I just am. The dude can do no wrong. Thor Ragnarok was a major stepping stone for his character. That movie, more so than ever, confirmed Mark Ruffalo as my definitive Hulk. He delivers a lot of story exposition, a job no actor wants. But spoken by him, it's oh so inspiring. These four give their most inspired Marvel performance to date. Peter Quill is a special favorite of mine. My brother-in-law is totally Chris Pratt. Yes, my life is a Marvel DC crossover. Many filmmakers have inspired my life. Producers, directors, writers, editors, directors of photography. Infinity War inspires me in all five respects. It also inspires my hero complex. Ah, never heard of one, I see. Well, that's all right. Jamie, take it away. The hero complex is simply a psychological construct in which a person feels the need to save other people. A person with the hero complex tends to seek out people who are in desperate need of help and often sacrifice their own needs in order to assist these people. I myself have a strong hero complex. In my daily life, this translates into my inability to say no when other people ask for my help. Thank you very much. In my case, take a moment like this. In a very real way, I want to be Spider-Man in that moment in real life. Thanks to a passionate team, the visual effects look real. They support the tone, the story, and actualize first-rate production design. Their home? If the walls could talk, you'd run. I have no doubt that you will find particular relationships relatable. Best friends that make a promise. Lovers that want more time. Brothers willing to die for each other. That side of ourselves we can't decide if we want or not. Thanos has more than one side to his person. Josh Brolin fits him like a gauntlet. He's made Thanos my favorite Marvel villain. He's not a pit stop villain. There's no greater force than him to defeat. He's the main character and a genuine threat. His efforts play out like a heist. Jeffrey Ford and Matthew Schmidt crafted the ultimate heist. They assembled close to 3,000 cuts from 900 hours of raw material. The final cut has a combination of the best ingredients, perfectly balanced as all movies should be. One word rests at the center of that balance. When you're dealing with powerful characters, such as the Avengers, they don't become interesting, human, or relatable until you zero in on their vulnerabilities. All three show different kinds of vulnerability. Brothers, no matter what. Tony Stark's Frankenstein. Weaponized emotional baggage. Moments of mocking, sacrifice, romantic outrage, and trade mark my favorite scenes. Tony Stark fills my favorite shot. He also delivers my favorite line. It carries the weight of the past 18 movies, and he shares it with pure grace. One note for possible improvement. Slow, that's all, just a little slow. Slowly unfolding this universe was a smart idea. I've thought about every superhero film that let me down. And each inspiration, Infinity War, has made the list where my respect lies. You, my friend, have my respect. Thank you.